Welcome to creating a node-based editor in Unity, so lesson eight. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to start to get our uh, data structure set up for the graph and our nodes. And so to do this, what we need to do is we need to um, build out our classes. All right, so we know we're going to need a class um, or a script, if you will, uh, for our graph. And that script is basically going to uh, manage everything that is at the graph level. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, build out uh, another uh, class structure for the node. So we're, just like the views, we're going to build out a class structure where we have a node base uh, script. And then every other node then extends functionality from that node based class. Okay. So let's actually get that all set up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close down our editor window for now. And in our scripts folder, and inside of the data folder, what I want to do is I want to pop open uh, the node graph, okay, script over here. And I don't need any other scripts open right now. And what, what we have to do is we have to start to um, block this in so uh, we can actually create um, uh, data using this particular graph. So this script is going to become the graph that we display in our editor window, okay? Um, so to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to be using the Unity editor, all right? And because this script lives outside of that editor uh, folder right here, uh, we definitely need to include the uh, if uh, Unity editor tag here, all right? So we'll say end if, just so that all editor code isn't compiled when we actually um, compile this Unity project down to an executable. All right, so then we're going to need a couple other using statements. So we need to be using system, all right, because we're going to serialize this particular um, script so that way we can save data to it. And then we're also going to be using uh, system.collections.generic because we want to be able to utilize lists. So because we're going to be creating a list of nodes, basically, and that's how the, the data for the nodes is going to be stored is in a big list. All right. So um, before we get into the meat here of the script, I'm going to set and tell you that I want to be able to serialize this script. That way it saves it to disk. All right. And we're also going to be making this into um, a scriptable object. So the scriptable object will allow us to actually attach this script to an asset. And we will see how that all works um, in, lesson, in the next lesson, actually, uh, when we actually create a graph inside of our um, editor window. But for now, let's just stub in our actual graph script. So I'm going to say public variables. All right, so I'm going to set up my regions just like I usually do. And we're going to do region main methods. All right. And then I'm going to do a uh, utility methods and region. There we go. All righty. So uh, what we want to do is we want to also give this script some variables. So we're going to give it a name. So we want to be able to name our graphs. So we're going to call this uh, graph name. And we're just going to initialize it to new graph. Welcome to creating a node-based editor in Unity, lesson nine. So. In order to, for us to start to create uh, a graph that is loaded by the editor over here uh, inside of Unity, we need to actually get our context menu up and running. So we're going to cover how to create context menus, um, custom context menus, here inside of um, our own editor window, and specifically within this work view, because we want to be able to right click in this work view right here, and we want to be able to say load graph, unload graph, create new graph. Um, this is where we're going to want to create new nodes, uh, stuff like that. All right, so <clears throat> let's actually get our um, work view script. So I'm going to swap over to um, uh, MonoDevelop over here, and I'm going to go to the work view. All right, so I'm going to close all but this. So we have the, the work view here, and what we're actually interested in is the right click. So here's where we're doing our right click uh, detection. And what we want to do is we actually want to set up a um, context menu. All right, so this context menu, context menu is going to um, allow us to um, create a little pop-up 
window basically and has a whole bunch of menu options in it and it, they'll fire off different methods that will do a specific utility um, type um, creation methods. All right. So it's actually pretty easy to, to do. So um, let's actually uh, get that rolling now. So I'm going to go jump back into my script here and I'm going to get rid of this debug log because we know this is the right click right here. And so what we want to do is we want to actually get a new context menu up and running. Okay. So to do this, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, call a new function and I'm going to um, say process. I'm going to call this function process context menu. All right. And because we don't have that, I'm going to highlight this method name and refactor and say create method like so. All right. And we'll put that in our utility area here. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to create a generic menu. So the generic menu is an option inside of Unity. So let's actually type this out. So um, down in here, uh, what I want to do is um, I want to type out generic menu. We'll highlight that. And then you can do control um, parenthesis, not parenthesis, comma, I think it is. And that launches the specific um, Unity documentation for that particular um, class. All right, so generic menu. You can see here they have a great example of how to do a context menu inside of an editor window. All right, so you can always look this up in the documentation, um, or you can always replay this video as well. So what, this is what we're going to do. We're going to create one of those little context menus that have a bunch of menu items in them, and they'll allow us to fire off different functions. All right, so we're going to call this generic menu menu, and it's going to be equal to a new generic menu. All right, so we create a new instance of a, of a menu. And basically, what I want to do is I want to add some menu items to this. So let's do menu item or menu dot add item. And we want to say uh, new GUI content, and we'll give this content uh, a label. And we'll just say create graph, like so. And then we will enable it. All right. And then what we have to do, you'll see there's a, a generic menu menu function. Now this basically will fire off another method that processes um, which uh, menu option we actually selected. So um, I'm going to call this the context context callback. All right. And we're going to send it an ID of zero. All right. So that way, this particular ID right here is specific to the create graph function. And now you'll notice that our context callback right here is red, which means it does not exist. So we're going to um, we're going to actually create that. So we're going to create a new method called this void uh, context callback, and we want to pass in an object because we don't really know what we're going to be getting. So we're going to say object is called obj. We know we're going to get some sort of object here. All right. So perfect. All right, so now what we can do inside of this content callback is we can actually create a switch statement, all right? And we can uh, cast the obj to a string. So we'll say to string because we're passing in a string, right? All right, so basically now what we'll do is we'll just say if case, uh, oops, sorry, zero, then we're going to do something. We'll just say debug.log. And we're going to say creating new graph. And then we'll break from that. And we'll do a default case and break from that. All right, so that basically will get everything hooked up for our context menu. We just have to do a couple more things. So once we're done adding menu items, OK, we have to then <clears throat> actually show the menu. menu. So we say menu.show as context, all right? And then we want to use the current event, so that way we can't keep doing things. So uh, we actually need to send in the event. So we're going to send in the event e. So in here, we get the event coming through here. So I'm going to send in that event because we're passing it into this process events method. So we have access to it. So then I can say e dot use, and basically that'll just tell the editor to eat up that current event. And it'll keep the context menu visible until we actually select some sort of option. All right, so let's test this out. 
All right, let's go into our editor. Once it's done compiling, let's right click and bam, there we go. We have a new context menu. And when we hit create graph, it says create a new graph in the console over here. So there we go, we got everything hooked up. So we can actually get um, a couple of other things set up. So we'll say menu dot add item and we'll say new GUI content and we'll say load graph. So we're gonna use this particular menu option to load a graph. So we'll say load graph and again say false and we'll do the context uh, callback and this time we'll pass in one. All right, so then we have to add that case to our callback method. Say one, and instead of creating a new graph, we'll be loading a graph. Like so, perfect. All right, so that basically gets everything up and running. All right, so um, let's go and see what we got. So now I'm gonna right click in my work view and I have a create graph and I have a load graph. So everything's working. So what we can do is we can actually utilize this context menu to actually create a new graph. So we're going to create a new instance of our, sorry, of our uh, node graph. Okay. And that'll automatically load it. So what we'll actually need to do is we'll actually need to test to see if our curve graph is uh, loaded or is not null. Or that way we can unload it too and say load graph. So let's actually get that set up as well. So uh, what I'm going to do, so I'm in my work view here. And um, <clears throat> what, I, what I really want to do is actually uh, create a, a global variable because I'm passing in the curve graph to my base. So let's actually put that into a variable. So we'll store it. So let me launch the view base here. And we'll make a, a protected. Uh, GT node graph called curve graph. All right, so we're going to send that in, and um, I'm go going to just actually remove this for now. I think I don't need it. So what I'm going to do is actually assign the uh, curve graph. We're going to say this dot curve graph. Sorry, this dot curve graph is equal to curve graph. So we'll put a little debug or a little comment there it says set the current view graph. All right, we'll get rid of this debug log and we'll say um, update view rectangle. There we go. That's a little bit cleaner, all set up for us. All right, so now what we're doing is we're passing in that graph and we're storing it in a protected variable. So that means now in our, our work view, I don't have to add another argument to all of my methods, which kind of gets messy after a while. All right, now I have a, um, a local variable I can use inside of the, the view itself. So what I can do down here then, is I can say if uh, curve graph does not equal null, then we're gonna add another menu item to the bottom here that says uh, unload graph. And we'll actually add a separator. So we can actually say menu dot um, add separator and give it an empty string there. All right, so we'll say unload graph. So now this particular menu option will only be available if we have a uh, graph loaded. All right, perfect. So then we'll basically add a new case to that. Whoops, there we go. Perfect. So we're going to say unloading graph. So let's go test that out now. Well, we can't really test it, but what, we, what will happen once we get the create graph hooked up, uh, you'll notice that the unload graph will pop up when we have a graph loaded in our work view over here. All right. So just to do a quick review here, what we did is we checked for our right click and then we called a custom function here, a custom method. And we were building up a new generic menu and we're showing it as a context. And then inside of each menu option, we're doing a method callback so that we can then process uh, some different utility functions to do some operations for us, like creating a new graph, loading a graph, and unloading a graph. All right, so that is that. 
and we will see you in the next lesson. Thanks so much. <laughs>